Hello and welcome to Veronica Hug. So today, as you can see, we're going to get really colorful and I'm going to show you how you can make different coral shapes or coral inspired little pieces and they can be in any shape and size and color which makes them really great. Apart from that, today I'm going to show you the noose loop that you see on here and that's been trending on social media lately. So I'm going to show you how you can do this and what I used as well. I wanted to make it colorful just so it's a little bit more playful. Of course, you can choose your own colors. So if you've been wondering how you can do something like this, then today's video is for you. You can, of course, customize this and make it, as I said, in any um, size that you'd like and in any style. So this is what we're going to be doing for today. So I'm going to do the corals first up, that's what I'm going to start with, and I just call them corals, of course they can um, be called flowers or whatever you prefer. And these we're going to leave for another video, but I did want to show you that we have that coming up soon. And if you'd like to see other projects as well, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I do post a lot of different ideas and projects. So as far as the day's project go, goes, you see here a lot of colors and these are the four that I'm going to use. So they do have a color gradient inside and I think it's going to work really, really well. You can see here two different styles of the new sloop and the corals themselves also have a lovely gradient. So the wool works really well with it. So in a local museum that's not too far from where I live, there was actually an exhibition of different corals, which is um, where I got my inspiration for today's project and I just thought I could share that with you since I do find it really fun and it's just something different that we haven't done so far and it's not going to be too difficult either, so you're going to have a lot of fun. The new loops as well are something I'm really excited about, so we're going to do that in a future video as well. So if you want to see how you can do it, you already see what I did, then stay tuned. This can be a great project for you, but also a great gift for somebody else or a great decorative piece for your own home. So I'm going to move this out of the way just a little bit so that we have a nice background to work on and so that you can see more nicely since this yarn is a little bit thinner than what I usually do in projects. So let me just clean this up a little bit and then we can get started. You see here that I'm using the red, orange, yellow um, ball, so that's what we're going to start with. And I'm going to zoom in so that you can see more nicely what I'm doing. So we will start with a little loop like this, so it's going to be something like a ring and then we're going to go into the ring, we're going to do a chain and go into the ring and do a single there. And then we're going to do seven half trebles. Number six, one more, and there we go, seven. So now I pull this a little bit tighter, I don't need it as big anymore. And now I'm going to do a half treble with the single here. So if you're not sure where to go in, because this is a little bit smaller than what I usually work with, then you can just go back and count seven and go into the single. So we're going into the first and the only single we actually did here. And we're going to do a half treble there. And then we're going to do a second half treble 
into the same stitch. And then we're going to start with the next part of this project. So we are going to do two half trebles into each of the stitches that I see. So we want our circle to grow. This was number five. And make sure you untangle on time so that you don't get close to um, the knots or so that you don't build any knots by pulling on it. So I'm just going to untangle this a little bit and then we can continue. Make sure you don't pull on it too hard because that way you might rip the yarn and that's not something that we want. So just be gentle. And now we can continue. So this was number eight and now I did the whole circle here, the whole first round. So now we're going to mark here and I'm just going to take some leftover yarn that I have from another project. So you don't even need a marker, you can just use anything. And then I'm going to continue. And I'm again doing two half travels into the one stitch on the bottom that I see. So that way we're increasing the number of stitches and I'm going to show you how you can do or how you can get the coral effect that I showed you. So that's the end result of this project. And now in the third spiral, we should have 3 times 8 since we had 8 stitches total in the first row. So 3 times 8, or first we had 8 and then 16 and then 24 now. Okay, so now we have the third spiral. It's done, so we have it complete, and now I'm gonna um, finish this off really quickly, and as always, I'm gonna mark my rows, just so um, you don't have to rewind the whole video and you always know which section you can go to if you need to. So this is still pretty simple, but as soon as we start doing a lot more stitches, it might get a little bit chaotic, so just counting your rows might 
help you um, still keep an overview over what you're doing. Um, so don't worry if you do end up being a little bit confused. This is normal because we're going to increase the number of stitches really soon. And I also like to mark whenever I work in rounds, um, mark my beginning and end of each round just because you always have to take care how many stitches you did, where you started, where you ended, so a mark makes that a lot easier and you don't have to think and watch that closely. So this also makes it a relaxing project, so I definitely recommend using a marker. And you can see this is, um, yeah, a little bit of a patient project, I guess. You, you're going to be uh, spending quite some time with it, but it's going to definitely be worth it in the end. So just stick with it and enjoy the process. It can be a very relaxing, almost meditative activity. This is also a great project if you want to use some leftover yarn that's not enough for a bigger project, so that's definitely something I can recommend and something I often do. So that might be something for um, your old yarn that you don't have a use for yet. Okay, the fourth round is done, so I'm going to move this blue thread that I'm using as my marker. We're going to start row 5. And I'm going to be back when I do my fifth round, or I can actually show you what I did from this point on. So you can see here I have a lot more rounds here where we just stopped. We have just four done, so the fifth we need to begin. And the more you do, the more corally it's going to look like in the end. And I also really like the color gradient of the yarn itself because it does um, kind of give it another dimension that a one colored yarn wouldn't really be able to do. So you see here, I'm going to continue basically on this one just as if it were the last one or the one we started with. And we're just doing two to have treble crochets into each one that we see and when we're done with it or when we're satisfied with the size and the look we can just shorten the thread, pull it out and that's pretty much it. So that's what I'm gonna do here. Okay, there we go. So now you can see the base on the one end and that's the circle that we just started ourselves. So this is how you get from point A to point B. And I can show you a different one in a different color. So you can easily recognize the circle that we start with, the little round that keeps increasing into a really lovely circle. So this one is a bit larger because I started with 16 chains or 16 um, half treble crochets in the first row or round and then I kept increasing that so that's why we have a little bit of a bigger result here. So this of course depends on the amount of yarn you have and also on 
how big you want your coral to be. Here is a blue one. I think I started with 12 with this one. Oh no, actually I started with 16 here as well. And then in the second row, I hope you can see that if I zoom in a little bit, um, that I did just one stitch per round. And then from that point on, I kept increasing. So you can kind of play around a little bit with um, the sizes. This is how, or with the number of stitches and then get a different size, but also get a different style of the coral, so to speak. So let me get a little piece that I also wanted to show you. So your coral game can be really different. So this is where I did just six stitches to start with and then I started increasing from there. So this is going to be a small one but a really compact one as well. And I'm also looking for some other things that I like. So these were the circular ones or the ones we started with a circle and then there are also these um, ones that are a little bit longer like this one so almost like a rectangle shape I would say or an oval so I'm going to show you how you can do that as well Again, we need our little slip knot, and we're going to start with 10 chains. Nine and 10, then one more, and then we go into the first chain and we do two singles. And then we're going to do just one in every other chain that we have. So we're doing one. Um, one side and then at the end at the very last one we're gonna do two singles and then we're gonna do um, two more since we do want to continue on the other side so this was the right side so to speak and now we're doing the left so we're again doing just one single per each chain that we see or the chain half So by making this um, these chains longer or by doing more chains or less chains, you're kind of deciding on how long um, your coral is going to be. And then when you finish with this round, you're going to go in and do a single into the first one. And then we're going to keep doing two singles per each, um, or not singles, half treble crochets per each one that we see. And this way you keep doing the same thing as you've already seen with the circular corals. It's just a little bit of a different beginning, but the rest of it is pretty much the same. So I wanted to show you something like this as well. I think this looks really, really lovely. So that's what I'm going to show you too. So today you're going to get multiple different projects. They're all going to be coral inspired. 
So we're starting with um, a slip knot and a chain. Then we're going to do another chain and go into the first one and do three half treble crochets. Now we're going to do an extra chain and since I don't want to have to weave this in at the end, we're going to take it with us and that's how we save that step for save time on weaving in. Now into the first stitch here, I'm going to go in and I'm going to do again a half treble crochet, actually three ones in, three tre half treble crochets into the same stitch. And when we're done with that, we're again going to do a chain with the beginning thread and then again into the first one I'm again going to do three half travels. And now it's again time for the little chain and then we can Again, do three half treble crochets. One chain and again continue. If you find it a little bit too complicated with the beginning thread, um, you can just skip that step and weave it in at the end. That's of course an option. I just like to save time and not have to weave in when I'm done with the project. Five and six. Okay, so I have six um, sections and I'm going to shorten the beginning thread. I don't need it anymore and it's, um, the weave-in is nice and long so we don't have to do it forever and now I'm just going to continue without it and I'm still doing the same thing. So one chain and then three half travel crochets into the same spot. And you can see this is also a great way to practice your stitches, it's nothing complicated and you still get a wonderful result in the end. So here is the coral in red and an orange shade. Of course I have here the blue one and as I said in the new loop video I'm going to show you how you can do those but I use the same colors that you see with the corals here today. So stay tuned and if you liked this video, make sure to check out the rest of my videos on my channel. I do many different things from crocheting to knitting to nooking or Tunisian crocheting. So there's a lot you can discover. So don't be shy, take a look. I'm sure you'll find something you like in my, on my channel below the video. So, I hope you enjoyed, feel free to shoot a thumbs up to let me know, you can also subscribe to my channel and if you do, don't forget the notification bell. So see you next time, enjoy your day and your projects, bye!